come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. You really get all of that when you're sitting in the hot seat. You get all of Colin right like there. Coming at you. Yeah, coming at you. you're right. In Sometimes 4D. When, he is, when he does come in like nice and loud, you're like, whoa. Well, we are not a movie review podcast. No, we're, you, no. you change your mind? That's right. We're like a therapy <laughs> This session. far in? So like, we're 10 years in. You changed your mind? <laughs> what did we establish last week? We were... It's a conversation. It's, it's a okay. movie conversation. Podcast. It's group therapy. Yeah. Okay. Based on a movie we just watched. Because yeah. we just watched yeah. this mm-hmm. movie. There you go. You're probably wondering who these people are who are talking to you, and I'll tell you, they are the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Holly. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... Sean. What did we watch tonight? Uh, we watched 1995's Virtuosity. Directed by? Brett Leonard. Who do we know Brett Leonard from? Well, I'm going to look at Brett Leonard's list here <laughs> oh, because he's done some things. But most famously, Virtuosity. No, he did. Uh, he started out with The Dead Pit. He moved on to The Lawnmower Wait, Man. Wait, The Dead Pit? Oh, no. Okay. The Dead Pit from 1989. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That looks familiar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Put that on the list. You look concerned. <laughs> you seem concerned by that information. That was the face yeah. of, why didn't we watch that? <laughs> yeah. I remember that movie. Oh. It was uh, ungood. Um, it was okay. ungood. I'm, I'm seeing some interesting images from it. Uh, the Lawnmower Man. But that's the most this is the most infamous movie, right? Because that's the movie. Infamous was, is a good word. Well, yeah. you Stephen are. King's The Lawnmower Man, yes. now known as The Lawnmower. Yeah, yeah. Because Stephen King sued that movie. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. See, we need to watch that movie. <laughs> um, he also did uh, also in 1995 a movie called Hideaway. Has anybody seen? That yeah. Movie? No. Okay. Yeah, that's the one with Jeff Goldblum and yeah. Sisto and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, Alicia Silverstone. Wait, is in Jesus Christ? Yes. Jeremy Sisto. Wow. Jeremy Sisto. Returned from the dead serial killer. <laughs> Yeah. Well, he he was resurrected. You're From saying, hell. Colin? Yes, <laughs> yes. I, I, he is he is risen. <laughs> I made I made good on my promise. I was at work the other day, and I literally said, "Oh, thank Jeremy Sisto, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he, the man that keeps coming back." <laughs> that also had a 3D animated ending. So this is a, oh, I mean, uh, so I okay. guess if you're looking through his uh, filmography, well, I was the, stopping at the Siegfried and Roy, the Magic Box, but uh, we, can, <laughs> we can talk about that later. Well, Brett what? Leonard was <laughs> like, I don't recall like the Dead Pit didn't seem like it was a big computer animated thing. It was like a it slow looked, budget slasher. Yeah, movie. and it looked like there's a lot of composite in it, not necessarily CGI. But his early '90s or '90s early 2000s mm-hmm. oeuvre. Yes. I like using that word. The oeuvre um, <laughs> consisted of, like, he was the guy known for putting, you remember the mind's eye? Anyone? Anyone worked at no. Media Play? Is that? Or bo- Borders? Oh, books? were those, like, <laughs> illusion things? Oh, no. wait, no, it was beyond the, oh, shit, mind's eye, Do you're you right, remember? were those books. Mind's eye was the books, wasn't there it? Was, yeah. But okay. there was this video series was it beyond the mind's eye? Something like or that. But vision? it was all mm. CG uh, animated, like kaleidoscopic stuff that, you know. For what purpose? I to get, get high. high. Yeah. And yeah, so I was like, to get high, like, yes. Was Amazing. it the, the gateway to Windows Media Player? Yeah. I think yeah. it was just because they could do it, right? Like they would release there was video a point tapes where it was like, like an hour of music set to the stuff. And some of it actually, I believe, ends up in the lawnmower man i'm gonna go on reddit and see what I could. i'm sure that there are clips of this on there oh, somewhere yeah because yeah. that's all it's like 45 minutes an hour of just oh i'll get over, high and watch you know, it for the craziest time because they had this new thing <laughs> yeah it was called computer mm-hmm. and what can we do with it and yeah. they decided we're gonna do everything mm-hmm. with it, yep. even if we don't need to yeah and this is the product or brett leonard is the product yes of, of that this era. era. Okay, so mm-hmm. basically, then I kind of see something going on where it's like he made the Lawnmower Man, and that became like a big smash hit because mm-hmm. everybody get stoned and go see yep. it. Yep. Uh, so he's going to be the guy who puts CG uh, in Billy Idol music videos because <laughs> <laughs> he did a couple of those along with Peter Gabriel, Kiss That Frog. I wonder that makes if sense. Yeah, we'd have to go. Yeah. So it's like cutting edge computer <laughs> yeah. graphics guy. Yes. Or director of computer graphics. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, it's uh, kind of setting you up for, because Hideaway ends with CGI stuff. There's some in this. Actually, I was kind of disappointed by the ending of Virtuosity when we get to it, that it didn't have an extended sequence mm. that took place in uh, 
abstract CG. There was a sequence oh. though. Was like there was a pretty long sequence. Yeah, but we'll get to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, did you want to go onto the chessboard that he's on? Like earlier? Yeah, on? I actually hang I out thought, in there. Yeah, I thought that's where oh, we we're headed. Okay. I, it felt like the movie at that point was kind of like, okay, this we're past the climax, but right. it felt like that's where you would put the. You know, now they have to fight in virtual space. I don't think they may not have had that ability because you would think when he says, welcome to my world, he'd shift to that yeah. where he's lived and not just some weird version of the city, which he kind of does. Right. But. Yeah. But not extended like, you know, mm-hmm. the Lottomar man. I mean, yeah. right. They did. Yeah. Okay. Who are we talking about when we say? Yeah, we should start at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. All right. So who's in this movie? Denzel Washington. Get mm-hmm. the fuck out of here. It's our first Denzel movie? I believe it is. MF Map. It has to be. It's got to be, right? Unless he was like just kind of in something at some point. Unless you guys did like training day way back in the day or something and early on, you know. This wouldn't be like, you know, like freak show movies. Well, Colin, right? there's a lot of movies been picked in the past yeah, that were not exactly freak, freak show movies. Right up there with Hook. Yeah. 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 You guys or did Home State Alone. of Grace. Um, <laughs> Home Alone. Just saying. <laughs> but, yeah. Did you watch State of Grace? Yeah. Uh, yeah. so, but he has been in a couple, as you were saying, heart yes. conditions, <laughs> <Good one. Yeah. laughs> um, oh, no. fallen or something like fallen, that, but yes, yeah, we yeah. haven't uh, done any of his movies, uh, before on the freak show. Um, who else is in this movie? Russell Crowe. Okay. So I guess uh, I'm trying to like place fresh this over movie. to the States. Okay. Cause I remember like his fresh over to the States movie was the quick and the dead. I was going to say this the is, quick and yeah. the dead was yeah. right. Like, Cause did anybody yeah. see romper stomper? Yes. There's a, did you know there's a romper stopper TV show now? In Australia? Yes. Oh. Re- yeah. Like right now? Yes, like right now. That sounds horrifying. Yep, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's a movie about skinheads in romper, Australia. Okay, romper stomper is Australian Australia's version of American History X. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, it's but a very tough it's movie. It's a rough but, movie but, to but watch. Also like an a- it has an action element to it. Right. And Russell Crowe has a like a uh, crude like prison tattoo skeleton tattooed all over his whole body. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's a really good movie. I mean it's, it's like just really a tough low watch, budget yeah. 90s indie mm-hmm. movie kind of thing but it launched i think his career because like so you could like his tell Mad Max. in that movie yeah. it was like this guy is something else mm-hmm. and then so then of course hollywood spotlight shines on him mm-hmm. they bring him over here and put him in the quick and the dead mm-hmm. and yeah. then they put him in virtuosity mm-hmm. so <laughs> this is the building of can he like will people go to see his movie can he you know right. open can a he movie? carry it mm-hmm. yeah yeah and he's third building this yeah behind behind Kelly Lynch Roadhouse <laughs> Roadhouse is Kelly Lynch yeah I mean it makes sense but to, at the time yes but it makes sense at the time to look back and see that he's third build after Kelly Lynch like wow <laughs> right what a time right, yes what a time well, well a that time. also makes me wonder about Denzel because he won an Oscar his first Oscar right was Glory and that was mm-hmm. in 90 yes. so we're, we're five years after he won mm-hmm. an Oscar so usually you get this kind of movie on an actor's resume like because they shot it like after they filmed their Oscar winning movie, yeah. but they haven't won the Oscar for it yet, and their price mm-hmm. hasn't gone up. Oh yeah, there's and a history of all this. Of Catwoman, the best. yeah, Catwoman, uh, Stealth. For <laughs> yeah, Jamie Fox yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're naming all the black actors and actresses yeah, who've yeah. done horrible movies because there's plenty of other ones that have done it too. But but yeah. it is like a phenomenon. That it, basically, yes. like an actor gets a lot of attention because they're in this Oscar winning movie, and then like the movie that comes out right after that is some shitty fucking yep. sci fi yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. Because uh, Charlize Theron won for Monster, and then was an Aeon Flux. Yep, right. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, I wonder, yeah, does Denzel, uh, I, I mean, I, I just, I, I want to see some fan come up to him and be like, I loved you in Virtuosity. And I mean, I'd tell him that. Yeah. He, just to be like, I, just because I want to know what he says. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, I mean, I guarantee some like nerdy convention fan has done this. Uh, you yeah, could have just I'm said sure. convention fan. The nerdy <laughs> yeah. is implied. I mean, well, you know. <laughs> and we're, how, we're counting ourselves in this. We're not making fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm not making fun. We're in and this. <laughs> this may uh, have been plant, a seed planted in my mind because I have read the mailbag that's coming up. But oh. uh, how far are we? This is 1995. How far are we from Demolition Man? Oh. The, the, it was 93. 93? Okay. So, so it's in the air. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It is. I say that only because the skeleton of the plot basically. Oh, is this is a similar. this is the double feature. <laughs> this oh, is the double feature. Virtuosity double and feature. Demolition Man. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I'll go see that, that in a heartbeat. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> mm, that 90s. Future stank. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So, so we, we, you weren't here. What do we call it? The ooze was the 90s, the ooze, and the 2000s mm-hmm. was the fuzz. 
Nobody remembers. No, we, nobody. We don't remember. Damn. We need a glossary of we all of our do. terms. But probably copyrighted it back then, and I was. Doing it. <laughs> but <laughs> this, this is like this is that time in the '90s where we were trying to predict what the future was going to oh, be yeah. like, this and we were like, always way wrong. This is like when we first got cars, and then we tried to, to figure out what the future is going to look like with cars, and then they're going to fly. Yeah, yeah. So now it's just like, oh, we've got computers. <laughs> mm-hmm. What's that going to look like? This. How far are we from the net? Oh, the net was 93, 95, yeah, 92, like maybe? That. Yeah. It's okay. all in that same So area. this is just like the cool thing to make movies about oh, right yeah. now. Yeah, oh, computers yeah. are new, so we make movies about computers. I think, yeah. I think my favorite line in this was the, oh, people used to sign off their emails with this. <laughs> yeah. The colon and right? yeah. One of the biggest clues to this is is the colon parentheses smiley face. <laughs> Emoticon, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, what year does this movie take place? Ooh. I don't think it's ever established. I think it's like... The future of 1995. I'm not a, a, a futuristic 1995. I, okay, because I I, yeah. it's not far into the future. And the technology that we see, like you know, uh, uh, out in everyday life, doesn't seem to be like I didn't spot anything that was like nothing, oh, look nothing at the, else seemed futuristic. No, yeah, right. Yeah. Just the main concept. It's like the that. cell. Where, like, they have this futuristic technology that's kind of an underground experiment. Right, yes. yeah. yeah. But otherwise, society is the same. Yeah, This is like exactly. a government thing. Well, I guess, Sean, why don't you tell us what the future science is that we have uncovered in virtuosity. Virtual reality, Colin. Holy fucking shit, really? I like that it's, <laughs> in this, it's, uh, when we came up with this virtual reality stuff, we thought we were just going to use it. It'd be great to tra- train my law enforcement officers. Yeah. Like, it, virtual reality is created by gigantic uh like turbine engines or something like that Mm -hmm. giant super magnets in an aircraft carrier yes Mm -hmm. and you have to have because this is the 90s yes and the 90s has this kind of um concrete gray and steel wide open big Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sets that Mm -hmm. we see in like every single like in the cell it's very industrial everything Mm -hmm. is everything could be a rave Mm-hmm. Right, we're yes. always it's in any '90s movie is always this close to a rave. Mm-hmm. Yep, just one <laughs> short turn and Denzel yep. Washington could, yeah, be, we are could one, be pulling. We are one sticks out of his arm. Yeah. Yep. and going nuts. We are one smoke <laughs> machine away. Yep, basically. Yeah. Well, he has a metal arm in this movie, which oh, is shit. never really addressed as like that being a, like there's no billboards. There is for, that the technology that uh, gave him an arm. Yeah, why I have to ask because he's. I'm assuming he got arrested as soon as he lost it, like during that incident. Right. Yeah. Right. Why well, give him a? Well, I mean, more, I guess prisoners have rights, right? So, more, like, more experiments. The right. Maybe? The right to uh, maybe more experiments. Yeah. Because uh, think of the cost. If this is like a new technology, or to give it to some inmate. Yeah. Yeah. And it it you it's used for one plot point, which is the most arbitrary thing later on in the movie. But we should we should back. Well, but we we they're doing experiments on the prisoners as it is. So the true. idea that they would do a medical experiment is not that far out of reach, You're considering right. they're already You're doing correct. things. Right. Anyone, so okay. that they would just bring him in and be like, mm, yeah, we're gonna try this technology. Yeah. 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 It's like what I'm in prison for the next twenty yeah. years. Well, yeah. I care. You are correct. Yeah. Okay, so Denzel and there's Washington. there's a white power issue in this prison anyway, so I feel like there's a lot of Nazi undertones going on. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, medical experiments, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> well, they let him off in the wrong, well, the, uh-huh. the guards put him in the wrong door, yeah. which leads to the Aryan Brotherhood, apparently. To Gen Pop okay, we, we, gotta, we gotta back uh, yeah, up. We got, yeah. Okay, let's, yeah, let's regroup. <laughs> like, wow, we've already gone to the Aryan Brotherhood. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, far. let's regroup. Um... All right, so uh, we're we're dropped into a world at the very beginning of this movie where Denzel Washington and his partner are police officers. If you can believe it, Denzel Washington Denzel, is a police officer. Damn it, Kate McKinley, I know. You beat me to the I, it's like, I know it's hard to believe, but <laughs> he's playing a cop. Yes. I mean, and not only is he a cop, his whole family's dead too, guys. I know you've never seen that before. <laughs> it's interesting casting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> inspired, it's, I would yeah, say. It's in the box, really. Has he had anybody? Had he done a lot of this type? By 1995. He was, he was right in the middle of it. Okay. Yeah, isn't like end. training day before this? And no, no, I think no. those are after. But yeah, because yeah. that's on. another Oscar. Uh, it's right here. Before yeah. this, he was doing, I mean, he did Malcolm X before this, but the Pelican Brief, he's a lawyer, Philadelphia. No I was going to say, when was Philadelphia? That was. Philadelphia was 93. Okay. You just got to scroll oh, wow. forever in this yeah. guy's filmography. So he had Fire, and then he did Fallen. What the hell? He had done Ricochet. Bone Collector mm-hmm. Ricochet. Mm-hmm. That's a Joel Silver, mm-hmm. like, kind of trashy. That's a free Oh, the show, Bone Collector. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bone wow, yeah. that's all before oh, yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's not like he's slumming. No, well, he's no. like, After. Denzel's a big deal at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it yeah, just... He's, it, but this, yeah, this is him on his way up. 
it just feels like a weird project for the, uh, someone of that resume to pick you it, know at that point in their career but okay. it feels it like he takes himself too seriously to do a movie like this would you believe it if i told you that denzel washington heavily restructured a lot of the script of this movie to was his family better. not dead at the beginning? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. He was no. like, you know. Uh, well, he did. To, they did a lot of things to this movie to better accentuate certain aspects of it. He also uh, took out uh, a romantic interest between him and Kelly Lynch in the movie. Good, good. Right. I'm glad for that. I yeah. mean, I also am. He took it out because he didn't believe um, it's uh, needed. In, in, well, in an interracial relationship would hurt the box office of this movie. Oh, well. that's a he, horrible reason that's, to I take mean, that right, out yeah. of the movie. That's really sad. I was yeah. hoping it was because right. he was smart enough to see that we didn't fucking need it. No, yeah. he took it out just because he didn't want to hurt box office. Oh, it's well, the yeah, other it's advantages bad. that we don't that's need too it. too bad. Mm-hmm. But yes. Mm-hmm. It's interesting that uh, at one point in the movie, the bad guy played by Russell Crowe says something about like uh, something about you're going to lose your you've lost, lost your sense of humor. He says to Denzel Washington, and I'm sitting there appreciating the irony that this is the most serious actor. In, He's like, never had it. Yeah, that's he like, ne- didn't Has have it to he lose. Ever been in a comedy. Oh, no. <laughs> Not no. Kind of funny Denzel. Comedy? Remember Denzel telling a joke, and you were like, "That's hilarious." <laughs> this is why we well. Uh-huh. We but that's heart attack. I, but see that's why well right yeah or so, whatever but is. that's i suppose like part of the appeal of the movie is watching like a kind of a a, a cliched you know script given to like big you know very overqualified <laughs> right <laughs> right right <laughs> right a simple script given yes to them yes. yeah mm. but they i mean they take it and they they run with it they chew on it they do everything with it in this movie. Okay, so we still haven't gotten to the, the premise of this. Right, right. Yes. yeah. Let's, um, we've, okay. we've said that there is virtual reality. So the yes. opening scene of the movie where Denzel is a police officer is a virtual reality mm-hmm. construct we come mm-hmm. to. And understand. they look like the Demolition Man police officer they uniforms. Really do. They do. Why would you? That is the worst police uniform I've ever seen. So that's what makes it look like, okay, we're in the future. But later, when we see in the real world, police look mm-hmm. like police. Yeah. Yeah. That's why yeah. we're like, what the fuck? Okay, so it looks like we're taking it's taking place in a future world with a future cop. Mm-hmm. And they are on the trail of a villain. Yes. In a virtual, because we eventually we get the idea that this, is, this isn't real. It looks real. There's, yeah, there's glitches. Yeah, the, there's glitches in the Matrix, basically. And this came before the Matrix, it obviously, did. but there's a heavy, like, deja vu. That now that we've real. seen the Matrix, looking back on this one. The, the power of all these movies that tried to do it <laughs> right. powered the Matrix in yeah. 1999. Mm-hmm. Um, so, who's our villain in the movie? Russell Crowe playing Sid 6.7. What's mm-hmm. Sid stand for? Uh, well, they're describing his characteristics. He's uh, sadistic, sadistic, intelligent, dangerous. Mm-hmm. Sid. Yep. Okay. So here's my first que- first of many questions. Six point seven. Six point seven. He's got 133 unique serial killers in his profile. Okay. Here's my first question. Why? <laughs> yeah, I know. Why? Okay. Well, let's go because, with that one. Yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> what? Right? What's the Valid. benefit to any of this? Valid question. Right. Uh, because if you can beat Sid, you could find any criminal in the world. I guess. Okay. So that's the idea. That's it's your it. extrapolation. Oh, that yeah. is not said in this movie. Yeah. But that's the only I think explanation is yeah. that. Because uh, Louise Fletcher, yes, Louise Fletcher is in this movie, mm-hmm. says something to the effect uh she's like an attorney general or something. Yeah, basically. This. And she says that this video game, basically a virtual reality video game, is set up to train police officers. So, yeah, they are creating mm-hmm. the super criminal. And if mm-hmm. the cops can chase down and find the super criminal in the video game world, then they'll be right. able to spot them in the real world. Mm-hmm. And there's this psycho uh developer Right. Yes. yes. Who's taking the whole way? I'm surprised he survived as long as he did. But he's a, he's like a, a tertiary villain throughout the entire movie. Right. Mm-hmm. Who's the guy who created Sid and loves him? You know, <laughs> he loves this fucking crazy thing that he's made. He and does. wants to see it turned loose. It's his baby. So yeah. So he's Sartain. In yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He, he so, but that's is. the whole shebang is just he really likes this thing that he's created. Because I was kind of questioning like what his motives were through this whole thing. I think it really is that they are on the why he created it. I don't know for the simulation. Per- yeah, right. And he, but you now know, it's it, a genius. It's a super genius thing, that he right? Because it is learning, I guess, and it's building upon itself. Mm-hmm. And all that. So, it's, are the other personalities just for fun? 
that he made, like Sheila oh, yeah. and the other ones, because oh, yeah. like those aren't part of the cop training program, right? Oh, Only that's just Sid for fun. is. Okay, when that's that's for the the engineering. Just jerk off material, yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the lady in red from the Matrix. The Matrix owes so much to virtuosity. Who knew? <laughs> 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 Who knew? Yeah, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Put that on your tombstone, Sean. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they'll be like, "Who the fuck is?" This guy? <laughs> um, what was your question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I think oh, was, what, like why? Why this? Guy, yeah. Yeah. Why? Why this guy would be so happy I about think, this I think it's, psychotic computer program? I think because of, of what it's doing. Because he got it. Because he grew it from. Uh, it's a god uh, complex. Yeah. He's, yeah. Proud, he's proud of his son. Let, yeah. Yeah. Let's cut it off right there. It's a god complex. All right. He's mm-hmm. Proud of his son. And when they threatened to shut him down because uh, he has uh, become aware enough to alter the um, settings of the experiments when they're trying to train the cops and all Mm -hmm. that stuff. Um, One cop or convict dies and they threaten to shut down the whole thing. So he decides to let his baby loose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the way that this is constructed, right, is one of these kind of tortured logics of science fiction movies where like the, the goal of the movie is to get the virtual artificial intelligence in a human body yes. and let it loose in the real world. So the, you know, former cop with the tortured past can hunt him. This is demolition man. Right? Yes. That's what we're saying. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it, is. Out of the ice <laughs> yeah, it is. And sent to capture him. Yes. 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 So, uh, Denzel, it turns out, yeah, he's not a cop. He's a, well, he was, he, he was. Yes. Okay. But then there was an incident. So not only, right. We're told in a flashback, he lost his entire family, was murdered by a serial killer that yep. he was chasing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of his fault. Mm-hmm. And then he also lost an arm in an explosion, which he may have caused by going into a booby trapped room with hostages. Yes. Yep. His wife, his, his wife, wife and child. child were in the room. Yep. Right. And he also shot innocent camera people. Yeah. Right. Yep. Apparently. Yep. So that sends him to the pokey where he gets a fake arm. Yep. Yeah. You know, yeah. And now gets volunteered for these experiments. But yeah. this jail looks like a future jail too. Yeah. yeah. That's right. It you was. know, the the way like the whole intake process and then the way the cells look with like the frosted glass doors yeah. and stuff. It yeah. looks like future jail. It Leading does. to the showdown with the guy from the Aryan Brotherhood, mm-hmm. which he wins. He's like, I'm not going anywhere. And then that whole plot is forgotten because yeah. we're going to spring. Denzel from prison. But when he's in prison, he's got a beard and dreads. And I don't think I've ever seen Denzel... And right. it was a good look for him. It was. I it was thought a good look it, for I think him. it's a yeah. better look than his clean cut look. Honestly. I know. When they I was changed digging it, it. I was like, digging oh, his hair. This is boring. I you know. know. It's a Denzel movie. Yeah, because yeah. like you see him like that in every movie. Yeah. You know, like, when he cut his hair, I was like, why? I know. I was like, you look good with the dreads I and like the beard, the man. Yeah, he looks like a young man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was trying to remember his he got game look, which might have had. I honestly think he's just going for like if I just look like this for my entire career. Like I'm timeless. I mean, Just he's not I wrong, like, I guess, yeah. but still, timeless. yeah, well, I mean, that, yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful so, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's very well, he ends up being recruited because a uh, crazy psycho developer meets crazy psycho programmer. Uh, me, yeah, uh, Kevin slash O'Connor, slash fabricator. Yeah, yeah, uh, who was uh, in who's, uh, uh, the Mummy? Remember? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's Benny. In the <laughs> oh, I remember. <laughs> okay, we spent uh, yep. like a half hour down here trying yeah, to yeah, figure yeah. out. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, we did. All right, now I remember. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, uh, very uh, psychotic um, creator goes with very lonely developer who is able to create. Um, androids, apparently. nanotechnology, nanotechnology, mm-hmm. organic androids, mm-hmm. um, and they can create them out of this guy's software. So, well, this is the 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 the, the super techy, you know, uh, futuristic tech that this movie has. Well, I don't even know if this is like uh, exclusive to this, but maybe the first time you saw it represented in a movie. I don't know. Pop- the idea that. So the nanotechnology, basically, that he is able to create uh, physical objects with, including uh, originally like a snake, you know, he, yes. he grows a mm-hmm. snake, but it can somehow uh, absorb the molecules, if, I'm, if I got this right, the molecules mm-hmm. of glass, specifically yeah. glass, right? Because right? they're right. silicone based, it says. Yeah. Okay, there yes. it is. Okay, yeah. so yeah. it's silicon based life forms that yep. you can, so it can recharge itself. If you mm-hmm. cut a part of it off, it can 
take glass mm-hmm. and reconstitute itself. Mm-hmm. Yes. But yeah. if you remove the like personality cube, it dies. <laughs> right. Okay, those yes. are our rules. Nano death. Yeah, nano death. Nano death. Nano death. Nano death. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Which sounds like something from um uh, whatchamacallit? T- t- hmm. Gotta give us more, man. Stallone. Uh, I need more. Uh, demolition, uh, demolition Man. man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Oy. So now we've set the table, right? Well, okay, so then... Well, murder, death, kill. That's we, what I was trying to yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've set, like, the first course of this seven-course meal on this table, That's yes. right, because there's a couple <laughs> more yeah. rules that we have to get to. I mean, so uh, uh, Sid is able to, because the of uh, evil machinations of the mm-hmm. crazy developer, whose motives, again, just seem to be... Uh, just wanting to see his world crazy. domination, evil, but, yeah, generic yeah, villain but he complex. Doesn't dominate anything. Yeah. He just gets he, to yeah. watch it happen. It's, right. it's scientific curiosity, Colin. He just wants yeah. to see where it he's, goes. He's Dr. Frankenstein. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he grows Sid in the laboratory mm-hmm. in yes. the real world. Mm-hmm. Sid is birthed from a egg. A pot. Yeah. A yeah. 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 It's very gooey. I it's don't like gooey. it. It's very gooey. It's very blue. It's very gross. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This movie wasn't very actually. It just adds that '90s thing where like oh. none of the violence is really graphic or bloody or anything like that. You get bloody and stuff, but it not really. Kind of shows it more after. The yeah, aftermath it's the aftermath stuff. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the act of. Mm-hmm. But well, yes. Sid. Okay, so this is the thing that you know, because then you're like, all right, well, what once Sid becomes uh, corporeal, right? Yes. It's like, okay, what rules govern him? Because he seems to have. Super strength. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is an android. Well, he did say he could. He said something about he doesn't swan dive. He backflips off the diving board. And when we first meet him, so that's why you see him backflip a bunch. Yeah, but I get that if you're <laughs> if you're like in the computer world, you're the god of the computer world, right? right? Mm-hmm. But then once you transfer over to reality, mm-hmm. you have to kind of have that fish out of water thing. Mm-hmm. And the only thing that we really get is a tip of the hat to that, like ooh, gravity, which mm-hmm. he masters yeah. right away, mm-hmm. and then. But it's like he's a perfect shot, right? He can pull off trick shots like Mm -hmm. uh, crazy. He's got super strength. He can heal himself. He can uh, do all sorts of acrobatic stuff in mm-hmm. the real world. So mm-hmm. it's like this is the perfect Terminator. Yeah, well, well, yes. they, but they, he has they an say, ego problem. They say he's a culmination of how a hundred and whatever. One hundred thirty-three. Yeah, point. he's a culmination of like over a hundred different people. So. Presumably, he's gotten these skills from each different person. I like the way that they say that uh, he got them from their genetic profile. Yeah. Yeah. I like vague science terms like this, that we just <laughs> smash two words together and say DNA. Take a little yeah. DNA yeah. from John Wayne Gacy and stick yeah. it in DNA. Here. Yep. There's uh, a little bit of, uh, well, we didn't say Ted Bundy, but. No, it didn't, no the name came up. The Hitler, Ted Bundy name yeah, came up yeah, on the all, thing. Yeah. IMDb has a list of all yeah. that are mentioned on there. Uh, I'm going to give you a tagline for this movie. Do okay, it. Since we are talking about Do that. It. Uh, Hell hath no fury like a computer composite of 183 serial killers. Meet Sid 6.7. <laughs> all right. That's it. I, I, if I saw that on a poster, I'd be like, all right. But, yeah, all right. I'm in. <laughs> like, yeah. what? Yeah, I'm in. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Seems weird. Okay. So this crazy thing is out there. It's a genius. That means it's uh, a yeah, criminal it's a, mastermind. Again, it's a genius with an ego problem. Um, also, they talk about... Because they have to give us the like scientific explanation of all these killers are in his head, but they're also all in there kind of fighting. If not mm-hmm. fighting, the conversation is very loud. Here's the problem with this, is that they name check all these serial killers. They show us the pogo, the clown makeup. They say Jan Wayne Gacy. They say mm-hmm. all they these other ones. The yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the problem. That's is the right. only actual serial killer behavior we see is he does like a Manson yep. replication kill. Yep. And then after that, you might as well forget the serial yep. killer stuff altogether. Yeah, really. Because because I'm expecting this is going to be like copycat, right? So right. I'm expecting every next kill is going to be a Gacy, a Bundy, yeah, or something. Right. No. The movie nope. just totally just drops that it. thread. Yeah. It's like, which, no, we're going to stick with this one fictional one we came up with. Yeah. Just that's just that. a bomber, right. which I'm sorry. Boring. Boring. <laughs> yes. But specifically, it's the person. So the, the, there's some talk because uh, Kelly Lynch plays a psychiatrist, psychologist, psychiatrist yes. who's assigned to Denzel Washington once they break him out of prison. They're like, you're going to go find this guy. Only mm-hmm. you can think like him because you almost caught him in the video game. She's like the, she's like the J-Lo in the cell. Yeah, like that kind of role. So she's going to provide psychological insight into 
Sid, I don't know. I didn't get All that because eighty-three psycho killers. <laughs> but yeah. it seemed like Denzel had the insight into. Uh, well, she is writing a book. She says. I yeah. think she's more going to get information mm-hmm. about everything. Denzel needs yeah. someone to talk to, yeah. so they got to yeah. give him he somebody. Needs a yeah. And they need a kid at some point. And yeah. yeah, she yeah. has yeah. a daughter, and as soon as you meet her, you're like, oh, I see. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um. The if true lies is not as anything. That daughter's getting kidnapped. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think, like, because there were other I things that just kind of get dropped as this thing goes along. But there's one. It says that in the psychology of the uh, AI, yes, all these personalities are fighting for dominance. But yes. one specific personality starts to come to the surface, and this is Michaela says the bomber. But this is the guy. Who killed Denzel's family? Yeah, mm-hmm. and yep. so because he's triggered by seeing Denzel coming after him, this personality raises to the top, and that's why Denzel can anticipate the killer's right. motivations. He, he profiled he's him before, next. and he was fil- filing yes. before. <clears throat> yeah. This is also why there is a very uh, uh, Batman Joker relationship going on here. Yep. Yeah, very much. Almost mm-hmm. literally, as he gets into his purple suit. Yep. Thing. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, that antagonism is uh, yeah definitely there. Well, before they, one thing I wanted to touch on before we get into the uh, the, the chase proper and okay. the relationship between the, the killer and the hero is that they give, talking about things that the movie introduces and then drops, they give yeah. uh, uh, the Snake Plissken um, oh, uh, yeah. like, uh, remedial <laughs> solution, right? Oh, Which yeah. Which is basically, <laughs> yes. we're going to turn this uh, cop turned criminal, well, he's arrested for, you know, for right. murder. Uh, loose to go after this other criminal, but we have to keep tabs on him. So right. what we're going to do... Got to have him on a leash. We're going to inject a little pill a into his brain mm-hmm. to track him, but then it's also, turns out... A self-destruct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and oh, then, yeah, it'll poison him. But, okay... A MacGuffin poison. But he finds this out from Russell Crowe. Yeah, right? Yes. Why is he trusting this information? Right. Because I think he feels that... Again, it's the Joker thing. It's like, this game's more fun if you're here, and if how, they kill you, then I have no more fun. How so. does Russell Crowe know? I think, well, first of all, is we don't... Is he just omnipresent at this point? He's yeah, he's just all-knowing, yeah. But it's also, we don't know what they put into his, what the evil dude uh, developer put into his information before he let him out. That's so true. So he could have told him, or mm. Sid, Sid has also been known to access things like controls for the simulation. I mean, he does that, come so. up with a patch really quick. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So... We're saying an actual embroidered An actual patch. embroidered Oh, yeah, patch. like and his name on, on it. His, yep. 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 Yeah, real quick. Yep. Little things yep. like that. Yep. But, I mean, I guess this... It, and a TV it, graphic. So mm-hmm. the, yeah. the information that he's got, like, well, the bomb in his head, you know, the, mm-hmm. the poison in his brain is given to him by, you know, the bad guy. Yeah. And then corroborated by the script, a scene later where Kelly Lynch, you know, he's talking to her, you didn't tell me about the poison in my brain. She's like, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I want, doesn't she say I wanted to or something like that? And she, she had a really bad line. Yeah, she's that like, that was she's like, like, I didn't think that we'd, I didn't think I'd have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And it's like, it's like, no, it's kind of important to yeah. know <laughs> so <laughs> regardless gotta, of if you have to use yeah, it or not. Yeah, it's still yeah. important. Well, then they have to talk to William Forsyth who's also in this movie as the, uh, the police yeah. chief mm-hmm. and he has to go you know, because he's on the side of Denzel Washington, right? Because mm-hmm. I think Denzel used to work for him, mm-hmm. right. and so he, in support of him, he goes in and destroys the contr- the computer where they're about to, like, you Kill know, him. at some point, like, actually use this device, and then it, it's taken out of the script That's almost as done. fast as it was introduced. They're just right. like, "All right, let's get that." She out literally of there. walks up and says, "I've I solved it. Don't worry about it it's anymore." Been taken care of. Yeah, it's yeah. been taken care of. That is a problem with this movie because they do it a lot. Yeah, they yeah. do it a yeah. lot. Even on and <laughs> like if you cut out all those moments, this is an hour and a half movie, if not less. Because yeah. even later on, when the helicopter there's a chase scene and the helicopter comes up and then it cuts to the cops going, "Get that helicopter out of there!" and the helicopter goes away. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. There's no point to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they do it a lot. They I just, felt that a lot. They yeah. just do <laughs> stuff. They just do stuff. They just do stuff. And yeah. Just, and get rid of it a moment later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is a problem with this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we have the problem for Denzel is that how's he going to find uh, Sid 6.2? 7. So, so 6. Oh, come on. 7. It all comes, rolls off the tongue, Colin. Mm-hmm. All right. So we established that um, Sid has the, uh, whatever, it's the, the game playing uh, 
uh, motivation. Yes, right? he wants mm-hmm. to play a game, and he also he wants attention. He wants an audience. Mm-hmm. He wants this is given to him by the Freddie Barnes. No, I the, think this the is other the... killer. No, I think it's the serial killer personalities. Yeah, I think it's all the elements. Yeah, they all want attention. At some yeah, point. they're all. They're all... Yeah. They want the infamy. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but take that infamy from every one of those and put it into one dude. Right. That's how yeah. much he wants it. And it was specifically Matthew Grimes was the one that killed Denzel's family. Yes. His whole. Sh- spiel was based on getting media attention right right because right. okay. yeah. in the flashback we see that a uh, camera crew and a reporter have been brought into his lair to interview him this is after he's presumably bombed and killed many people mm-hmm. to get his side of the story so mm-hmm. yes he does love attention mm-hmm. he loves attention loves attention no. I mean, he wants it, it, craves it i mean it's <laughs> like that it. is like the, almost like he kills because the movie says that he kills he's yeah. a serial mm-hmm. killer that's what they do but his primary thing, it seems to be, is like to do it in the most public way possible. Yes. Now, I'm sitting around the table with three people that have worked at TV stations. Correct. How did you all feel about the mass TV station murder that happened at, what, three different TV stations in there this was movie? A lot of t- Everybody got a taken lot of out. Yeah. Murder yeah, a lot of murder. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Unfortunate. It was uncomfortable. Yeah, I was like, it was like yeah. y'all, it never feel a little good. triggered by this? Yeah. <laughs> well, I just, I kept on sitting there going like, well, wait, who's actually switching the camera? That's what I was thinking. I'm like, there's nobody in here. <laughs> <laughs> if you kill everybody, there's no one to switch the camera. Yeah. I guess at one point they do address a that point. Yeah. But at, later the, on, at the wrestling match. Yep. There's a wrestling match in this. Movie. Oh, it's a U- yeah. Yeah, the UFC yeah. 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 With multiple people yeah. in the ring. I don't yeah. know. This yeah. was like, the honeypot shot yeah, lingers for too like long. Pre UFC. This was right. Like, it's it, ultimate but it's, it is. It is. I know. But like, like, but like the UFC that we know. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Like, this is like yeah. UFC pay-per-view three. Yeah. And they're on like 252 right now. Right. Like there's a lot less rules. And yeah. 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 It's mm-hmm. like street rules. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. There were like six people in that ring. <laughs> yeah, there were a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And of course, yeah, like you said, he eventually dons a purple suit so he can. Uh, he does. Yeah. Um, and and uh, we first are introduced to that purple suit. How? At a rave. Well, no, no. <laughs> it's a club. It's a club. Well, we do get that. All right. When it's on Sid 6.7. Oh, the cut that transition. The needle drop. Oh, yeah. oh, that was, <laughs> it was Saturday the most... fever needle drop. Yeah, it was great. It was that well, was the great. lead up to it was the most cliched fucking dialogue. I'm like, oh god, but the cut to <laughs> yeah. Saturday night for him walking down the yeah. street yeah. was like, okay, yeah, the cut is good. good. Yeah, that was saved, you know, yeah, because yeah. um, he's out on the street, he could be anywhere. Yep. Right. what's he gonna do now? Yeah, like, I say, yeah. what does six but Sid six point seven want to do in the real world? And then <laughs> cut cut. <laughs> purple suit. At a flea market. <laughs> Getting high fives. Yeah. This is your uh, your man out of... Uh, your fish out of water. Yeah, yeah, scene, water yeah. yeah. So this has the to The man be, out of fish. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so Russell Crowe specifically in this movie. Yes. Then. Yeah, we All haven't right. really gotten into the Russell Crowe of it. <laughs> yeah. Zaniness of the Russell Yeah, Crow. zaniness. Yeah. There is... There has got to be so much ADR like little giggling of him that is placed throughout this movie yeah. that I hear randomly... Like, just as he's running away, you're hee 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 hee. Mm-hmm. Like, when we say it's very Joker and Batman, we it mean is it Joker. is really Joker. Very. Yeah. Like, Joker that, the animated series. It's even got that suit. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's that big three piece. That big, crossover. like, Dick yes. Tracy style, like, yeah. zoot suit almost. Yeah. yeah. Pads and yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. He's having, like, I mean, this had to be fun to do. It feels like. It, oh, yeah. 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 Uh, I get to come over and make a, after he did a couple, of, like, a big American action movie with Denzel Washington. I mean, you know. Well, and Romper Stomper's pretty heavy, so yes. this, is, this is pretty light in comparison. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess the, the appeal, it seems like, to, to an actor in something like this is like, even though Denzel Washington is like the lead guy, ironically, when I'm watching the movie, I'm like, he's got the most boring part. Like, yeah. everything mm-hmm. about yeah. his make, psychological makeup and all that is yeah. like so boilerplate and yeah. so, like, you know, right. cliche. Right. But the villain has can do all this stuff you know like running around and doing crazy shit he's the the uh you know at the the i was gonna say the victim of I mean, makeup effects yeah. work and you know or the yeah. centerpiece that's usually how it goes like most actors realize that yeah it's it's great to play the hero but the fun stuff is playing the villain mm-hmm. that's like where the meat of it is you know that's mm-hmm. where you get to really shine mm-hmm. yeah and he had to have fun doing all this stuff because he but he, he's schizophrenic in this role because he, he slaps from being co- yeah slaps 
which is from being quiet to uh, slapping people, uh, to like yelling at people. And uh, he's very he's, growly. He's very growly. Yeah, he has yeah. anger issues. Um, yeah, he's but he's like laugh. He's having but fun. he's having fun. Yeah. Like that scene in the nightclub where where apparent. See, this is a more future tech. This instrument he's playing, where <laughs> yes. it's like it's like a future theremin, but yeah. it's every type of instrument. Yeah. yeah, is played like a theremin, and Gross. he's like has like a whole dance sequence playing it's like music. A theremin to this. synthesizer. Yeah, right. yeah. And he records Crazy. screaming from his audience, so he yeah. can play those. Like yeah. instruments. We're gonna record a He's symphony. Sitting. He's a yeah. maestro. Yeah. yeah. On Death TV. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that he created his own news network. He did. Death yeah. TV. Yeah. He yeah. created Faces of Death. Basically, yes. <laughs> and then he became a very uh, amiable host of mm-hmm. the show. I would say, like, I watch him. Yeah. And everything is being projected on a big screen and like thermal imaging. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. The around him. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The, the, the rave. And the it's club a big sequence. It uh, is. Yeah. Uh, you know, because he's taking everybody hostage. He's recording the screams. Denzel's got to figure out a way to get in there. But then mm-hmm. there's an overturned tanker truck you know, on the freeway. And he's got to run. That doesn't around. explode. It doesn't explode. No. Isn't there a like, fire right underneath it? There yes. is. And two other cars hit it. And yet, still, why doesn't was explode. there no explosion? Yeah. Because yeah, I was trying to figure out what that action scene was set up to do. Like, first of all, I was like, I wow, did Sid somehow <laughs> block the, the traffic? Right. And then you're like, no. They're like, oh, they're saving that for the chase scene after. After, mm. And then there's a whole thing about like, I'm going to stand up here and shoot it. And like, they're going to chase and come at me and hit the brakes. And we're all going to go up in a big ball of fire. And that never happens. No. no and not, you're like, no. what in the fuck was the point mm-hmm. of all that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a question we ask a lot in this movie. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. It yeah. looks big. Because, you know, you're out on the Los Angeles sure. street. It yeah. literally looks like a gasoline around. truck. Like, yeah. it looks like this thing should blow up immediately. It's got like, fire yeah. underneath it. And it yeah. But it also looks like they lit a, like a fire bar just to put it underneath. Yeah. Just like, look, yeah. there's fire. It yeah. could blow up. Mm-hmm. Never does. No. Jo- Joel Silver would be very disappointed. I know. Joel He's Silver walked out much. of the street. Yeah, he was like, what? <laughs> Joel Silver would have destroyed that bridge, yeah. and it would have been and out of commission blocked. for months yeah. in Los Angeles. And we would have seen the explosion from, like, three different angles, yes. one right after another, yeah. Uh, I and then a car days. would have come down in a flame. Yeah. You know he didn't finish this movie. No. He walked out. No. Damn it. Walked Joel out. Silver, you, God, you. <laughs> that man was something else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, we should have like the Joel Silver Awards for good explosions yeah. in movies. Oh, yeah, yes. yes. yeah. So that's like brilliant. Nobody, but what? You, who blows up buildings like that anymore? Well, like, maybe like he the took dark that art with him. That's yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was thinking that like you know, there's a rooftop fight at the end of this movie yes. where uh, I, was I was gonna like, say when we were watching this, I was like, I want someone to come up with a montage of every nighttime rooftop fight scene that we've ever had. Yeah, yeah. I've seen so many goddamn. Nighttime rooftop scenes. Yep. Well, we just recently saw it in like no way, Spider-Man No Way Home. Yeah. Um, but yeah. these ones, what it seems like their technique is, is that they get stunt people out there to do the fight on the real rooftop from a helicopter shot. And yes. then when you cut in for mm-hmm. close-ups, you're on a, you know, they're on a stage with a big cyclorama mm-hmm. and a recreation of the roof. But I'm like, it feels, you know, it has a kind of a realistic mm-hmm. feel to it. It feels more real than No Way Home's ending. Yeah. You know. Uh, and then at the end, they actually yes, pay to the get sand Denzel up there, you know, uh, <laughs> on the roof himself, you know, for that last uh, hero shot. But yes. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, okay. yeah. He does get a hero shot. At the end. Yeah. Because then you they gotta. actually put him up on the roof right. for that one shot. You got to. Um, OK. So this glory hog uh, is like, I want to kill people in the biggest, uh, mm-hmm. most public venue possible after this thing at the nightclub doesn't right. work out. Right. And he sees it on the, he sees himself or he sees it on the news. People talking about his murder scene at the, at the rave or whatever. I do like his little curiosity. His little He's smile like he's so going excited TV TV going, turning oh, it on every TV. It's yep. me. This guy, and maybe this movie is uh, prescient, right? Because it kind of like, uh, it foresaw YouTube uh, narcissism. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. And yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I like, I really do like that line um, when Kelly Lynch like stops the tape and like, she's like, you're like a kid performing for your parent. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. I was like, that's exactly what he looks like right now. <laughs> yeah. Like an evil child. <laughs> Can you imagine the kid looking like that? And you're just like, yeah. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> evil child. Well, eventually, uh, yeah, I, I, and I, I'm correct me if I'm skipping over salient plot details. Uh, but, sure, I get right on that. Yeah, mm-hmm. but eventually he decides to go to the. Um, well, he, I guess he goes to the UFC fight. The UFC. UFC fight. There's a few redundant. Like the UFC fight could have been cut out. 
Yeah, yeah, it doesn't there's a lot matter. Of, some, there's some redundant action scenes. They made the it movie. seem like it was going to be a much bigger deal than it ended yes. up being. Instead, yeah. he, just, he he goes in, he enjoys the crowd for a minute, and then he runs out to the next crowd. And this is it's well, yeah. part he gets of the shot a couple of times, yes. and um, I think because then we're like, okay, we're learning like what can you know, what, does he have an Achilles heel? But it just right. seems like he can go somewhere and feed off of glass. Sometimes he actually eats the glass. Mm -hmm. There's a whole uh, kind of standard plot subplot, or uh, sorry, plot twist where um not only did you have kelly lynch kind of playing devil's advocate f against denzel washington in one scene where i'm like isn't she supposed to be on his side she's like well you think that it's all this serial killer but it could be that it's just you right and i'm like okay that was weird and then <laughs> uh you have denzel washington uh the hero accused of a new uh, murder. Another murder, yeah. Which right. Why is this in this movie at which, all? Yeah. To get him we, back in the truck? <laughs> so they can have this wonderful scene where he's like, hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Yeah, I, did funny. I, did, it? I did like that scene. This yeah. is what you have to measure against in this movie. I did like that like, scene. They didn't yeah. have to do this, and it's pretty redundant, but you get this out of it. Yeah. But the is that good enough? But then it tries to add in the LAPD as like another villain, because yeah. now they're going to be chasing Denzel. Yeah. But then, like you said, Colin, they just get called off. Yeah. Literally yeah. called off and out of the movie. And that's like yeah. that whole yeah. D like E F plot. I don't know why that it seems mattered. Like, well, all your all these movies, it seems like have to have the like the the man wrongly accused, right? Because we find out that he didn't actually fire the shot to hit the woman even though he fired or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Uh it's like a whole thing. Who sh who who shot her? Apparently Sid did. Yeah. Yeah, shot her from the back. Because he had the this way. he had the gun against her back, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Even though to me it looked like Denzel shot her. Yeah. Yeah. It's the point, Colin. You fell for it. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I never because his his gun was at like Right. Like it never came up. But I don't know. Yep. Whatever. I, I agree, Holly. Okay. Like, Just that's checking. where I thought it was too. Just checking. Yeah. Like, you know. Yep. <laughs> then he uses a kid as a human shield on the train. It's hilarious. Oh, that was funny, yeah. And it does give them a chance when uh Denzel is in custody for them to have that scene where Sid gets to say, like, basically, the game isn't worth playing unless yeah. you're playing against me. Yeah. So I'm gonna turn you loose. So yeah, you can because, chase me down. Yeah, we came out of an extended flashback where we pretty much get the whole story of Denzel Washington and how he lost his arm and everything. And he wakes up in the truck that has been, uh, all the guards are dead. It's pulled over to the side of the road and Russell Crowe is, you know, he's like, hey, buddy. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, uh, just because I carry the joy of killing your entire family with me doesn't mean we can't be friends. <laughs> yeah, it's that kind of relationship. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, I guess that's fun. what we're, yeah. That's, that's Joker Batman. That's, that is that antagonistic. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> it, it is. I like that. It's fun. And that leads to the um, TV station thing, right? Where there's a uh, there's a protest going on about uh, right. the border, about closing the borders, or something like that. And you're like, what year is this? Yeah, in 1995. And there's a debate sad. happening <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, on TV that Sid interrupts. Uh, kills the people taking play, or at least one of the yes. participants in the debate. And takes over the TV station, renames yeah. it Death TV, and so he is going to kill somebody because he has the entire mm -hmm. station hostage. Yes. And so we're watching uh, the like. Well, I guess it's a live stream. It's broadcast yeah. TV for 1995. We did it again. But we you did get it again. to see the. <laughs> I just used to broadcast TV. <laughs> That's it. But they have <laughs> they have the viewer uh, tallies. Oh yeah, they do demo they demographic like. stuff. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, like, wow, that's quick. What if <laughs> I know, right? Ethnicity and age groups and all <laughs> right? that stuff. This uh, is the data we need now in television. Yeah, this is seeing the future. Like if you yeah. kill somebody on uh, Facebook Live, man, that that's the biggest uh, ratings that you can get. Mm -hmm. That was a downer, but probably that was a downer because yeah. it like, happened geez. a couple times. Like Jesus, Colin. Like, uh, yeah, damn. I'm saying that this movie, you know, it has something to it, as it foresaw the future. Um, yeah, the you future know, Colin. you know, it's another movie I think predicted this kind of stuff too, called Scream Four. I think was yeah. also along the lines yep. of this kind of I <laughs> <that> thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so anyway, the poor little girl, Kelly Lynch's daughter. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. she's played been by Kaylee Cuoco. There you go. 
in her first, obviously, movie. She's like yeah. seven. Mm-hmm. She's young, yeah. She's and she's young. taking hostage. She is. She's the main hostage. Because she's going to get blown up in two We knew hours. that was going to happen. When he had time to do this and manufacture the patch, you know, that has his name mm-hmm. on it. He's been like busy. Yeah. And come up with the death TV yeah. logo bump. Like yeah. His TV yeah. graphic and a new patch. Like, yeah. he's had a very productive mm-hmm. afternoon. And he's got her booby trapped in a way that uh, is all kind of uh, he's elaborate. He's so fast. Because he's thought he's of everything. Very he's fast. thought of every outcome. Yeah. Where did um, he get these supplies? Maybe. What, at the flea market, I assume, <laughs> when he was Saturday Night Fevering around? You'd be surprised what you can get at a flea market. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can just buy yep. bombs. I yep. mean, the upside I mean, is he's an AI, so he doesn't sleep, right? You, right. So he has he's out there the buying time. shit all night long. Right. He's yes. on a mission. Um, mm-hmm. Buying. <laughs> yeah, stealing. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yes. Like the Terminator bought guns at the beginning of Terminator. Right. Yes. right. He does feel a lot like the Terminator at some point. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, yeah. A little bit. Um. So the Terminator via Ben McKenzie. Yeah. Yes. Very, <laughs> a, very yeah. Ben McKenzie. That's a deep cut for all of you out there. Did we say that William Fitchner Fickner is in this movie? He also? is. Yeah. But he's not got a lot of faces. A good role. Yeah. Like he's kind of a like a business dude who's just trying to like let's make sure we cover this up if anything goes wrong. Mm-hmm. Is it me or did I think that pretty much everybody aside from the leads were just kind of in like it was like wow you know William Forsyth or wow mm-hmm. Kevin O'Connor or wow Louise Fletcher and they just kind of came in and said lines and yep. like, think, this, uh, this is not an mm-hmm. actor's movie. No, no I think mm-hmm. well I, I think this is Denzel's movie. And yeah, I think that's Denzel. This is a Russell Crowe. I, like, I, I think, but I, no, no. I think Denzel that, thinks it's his yes, movie. I think yeah. Denzel thinks this is Denzel's movie. And this is how I imagine every Denzel movie goes, right? Like he only does movies where he has this much kind of control, yeah, right? Like Ed, like, Norton, yeah, right? Ed Norton's yeah. just like, I got to rewrite the script for yep. a minute. Yeah. Yep. So mm-hmm. did he miscalculate then? It, because it's like, hey, this is going to be my movie, but it's actually a Russell Crowe movie. I think so. Maybe yeah. he didn't realize that Russell Crowe was going to bring it. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, he didn't hard. bring anything. He so. didn't know how hard he was going to go. Yeah, <laughs> he well, he, he's new to Hollywood, right? So right. he doesn't know that this guy's going to go this hard. You know, he had to know reading the script that that was like the showy. Or, you, I assume I don't know. Yeah, I mean, but so, but there are some actors that don't want to play the villain. I th- there are some true. actors that want to be known as that hero character their whole lives. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know, and then, I yeah. Think, but I think yeah. that's what's going on with Denzel right. here. That's he thinks that too. kind of stoic. He always wants yeah. to be the hero. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, stoic, heroic. And uh, I'm I'm not gonna, saying yeah. De- I'm not saying Denzel's not a good actor, but he is kind of a one trick pony. Yeah, he's got one thing. He plays the hero, and that's mm-hmm. kind of it. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, looking back, at least, and this is maybe not the best representation of that role, you know, in his yeah. career. Yeah, yeah. He, he's like, done this role a ton better, yeah. thirty yeah. times, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, Okay, but there's an ending where Sid is shot full of holes and lands on glass, and we're like, oh, no, he's going to, you know, but we haven't found the little girl yet. Yep, she's going to blow up. Because uh, we found we find out that in order to uh, have that nano death, you got to pull that uh, cube right. out of... Because he falls on, like, a pile of shards of glass. He, he, the makeup he is put, cool here. The makeup it is. is cool. It's very yeah. cool. He gets put through glass and just falls on lined up sheets of glass. Yeah, yeah. and There's it's like so much glass. It's like three foot shards skewered right through him. Yeah. It's really it's cool. cool. pattern like coming out of the back of his head. Yeah. Thing. Like, like it is was, very cool. It's elaborate. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really cool. elaborate. But they had fun doing mm-hmm. that. Yeah, it's A-grade Hollywood, you mm-hmm. know, for that. The oh, yeah. period of time. Makeup yeah. effects work. The mm-hmm. CG, of course, needs work. Right. But that's yeah. just, again, it was cutting edge for them. Right. But yeah. now it looks really bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, naturally, anyone else falls on this much glass that would kill them, but he absorbs glass for regeneration. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, what, you know, they're like, well, how are we going to find where the little girl is? Yeah, because Denzel reaches in the back of his head and rips out his, his cube, mm-hmm. his whole his, operating system, as it were. Yeah. His hard drive. Mm-hmm. And I think the line like, what was have you basically, done? yeah. Now you're never going to find out where the little girl is. Oh, that's the evil developer who's still alive at this yeah, point. Yeah, right. You know why they trust him for out. anything? Well, because she, uh, Kelly, oh, she, right, Kelly, she got Lynch, him. yeah, brings him up at gunpoint. Right. Um. Then the movie like resets. It was a. It was a weird. It was uh, weird. Yeah. Yeah. Where I suppose like I remember being you know when you were in movie theaters and something like that would happen. You thought that somebody screwed something up in the projection booth right. and stapled, you know, or spliced. Real three is it? With real <laughs> yeah. three, we can't do this. <laughs> like, wait, why are we watching this again? <laughs> There's yeah. a moment in funny games like that. Yeah, yeah well, I know. The I'm talking about. There's a moment in funny games that. that's like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you figured there could have been. I wonder if there would have been a better way so that you didn't know you were back in the game. 
because they have to explain it to you. Because I was like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Right. This is like an alternate version where Denzel dies and he gets away and you're like, what? And so then to explain to the audience what the hell's going on, they cut to the quote unquote real world where the evil uh, developer and Louise Where Denzel's Fletcher, running while yeah. attached to a machine. In those crazy 90s, you know, get up or, you know, whatever the mechanical. Yeah, the chair and, attached to the arm. That and the giant, the you know, yeah. you know, steel room. Um, but that's, I guess, their plan, right? They've rebooted Sid back into the VR so that they can replay what has just happened in order to get the information of where the daughter is. Because this time he doesn't know that he's in the VR. Right. Okay. Because he has a, died. Yeah. And he mm-hmm. does not know he's been brought back to life. But, mm-hmm. I mean, to further complicate this, because eventually he tells Kelly Lynch where her daughter is indirectly, and they're like, okay, we know where she is. We can save her. But we still have the evil developer is, like, in charge of the, his machine. Yeah. And it's so like this- he brings her out, but then he, like, starts going, ah, I'm going to let Sid run free with Denzel. Yeah. And so he kills Bill Forsyth and like, okay, I'm going to lock Denzel in this situation. Right. And then Denzel gets thrown off a roof into the 90s internet. Yeah. Virtual reality world. Into yeah. Windows Media Player. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The mind's eye. He goes beyond the mind's eye. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. I saw an elephant in that mind's eye. And mm-hmm. he just falls through nothingness until um, Kelly Lynch eventually gets him out of the system. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Russell Crowe. Yeah, because there was that whole thing, like you said, where uh, uh, Russell Crowe was like, you're welcome to my world now, right? Yeah. Yeah. And some shit should have got weird. It feels like they should have squared off. Yes. The fact that they didn't have a battle in VR world where uh, Sid has the, you know, total upper hand. Yeah. feels like the movie just went like, and then we unplugged uh, Will uh, Will Smith, I almost said, uh, Denzel Washington. Yeah. I was thinking of, yeah. Because Colin... (laughs) This is Denzel's movie. Mm-hmm. We just unplug him. According to Like Denzel. the Matrix. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's why he keeps going and Sid does not. I feel like you just wanted Drawn, Colin. Well. <laughs> I know another movie <laughs> that was able to do that, you know, from the uh, the reality to, right. to the computer world. Okay. <laughs> but they do find the daughter. Let's. Oh, th- thank, thank God. Daughter. We got to talk okay. about this. Yeah, I this mean... is where things really fall apart. Please take us through. This is like another 10 minutes. Yeah. It is. It's like we keep going. So she's in like a big like rooftop industrial fan where yes. like the big blade's spinning and pointing well, all up the to pollution the yeah. Comes yeah. Out. yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's down in that. So Denzel has to use his metal arm to hold the blade. Called that shit. I was yeah. like, he's going to yeah. use that fucking well, metal yeah, arm. Because why does yeah. he have a metal arm? Right. Yeah. For this moment. It's yeah. the only reason to have a metal arm. Yep. Yeah. He gets in, there's lasers. He does do a weird thing where he's running and he's coming up to glass that he has uh-huh. to get through and he holds up his little arm with yeah. his finger yeah, and yeah. just runs through the glass. Oh, because yeah. that was, yeah, we pointed out, that's the 90s uh, glass hallway oh, yeah. as somebody's shooting. This was also used in yeah. the Matrix and everything, oh, yeah. sh- all the pat- uh, panels mm-hmm. shatter as they run past. Yep, yep. It, you, it's cool. I like it. Yeah, it, <laughs> it works. Yeah. Would you be surprised if I told you mm-hmm. they brought in an action editor specifically to punch up those parts? Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. No, that yeah. wouldn't surprise me. I mean, it's effective. I yeah. thought you were going to say it was filmed in the same lobby as the Matrix. That it, Matrix shooter. Oh, Jesus! Because it, it looks been. the same. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so there's lasers. Oh yeah, because we got to complicate things laser. further. Um, yeah. Laser grid. Obviously. There is a little computer attached to a pressure plate that she is sitting on and he says, "I can't lift you up off the pressure plate because it'll the bomb will go off." So he goes over to the computer. Trying to, he's got what two minutes left. Trying to yeah. stop the timer, which okay, so that stops the timer, but doesn't solve your pressure pr- plate right. problem he, he at ends, all. Yeah, he ends up pulling a tube because he ends up pulling a tube out of his metal arm to try. Looks and, like a glow stick, right. which you think would like make the arm not work, but right? Okay. Like, I'm like, is that yep. not like which finger doesn't work now? Yeah. That right, yeah. this out. <laughs> Just one finger goes. It's a fiber it, like, optic yeah. cable. Yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. And so he's trying to bypass the bomb, I guess. Well, this he is just says gibberish words out loud. Kelly Lynch basically just says like, "You have to like get into the CPU and reboot the master clock because that's yeah. going to solve it right there." Yeah, yeah. you just uh, just adjust the time on the clock. Just yeah. turn it back like it's fucking daylight savings time. That'll right. fix this. Yep. Okay. So, so let's so, just so let's just put a tube in the input and output and call it a day. Yep. Yeah. 
Yep. That's all you so gotta just, do. It's yep. all you gotta do. Yep. That's it. Yep. <laughs> so just time runs on a loop that's and this thing will But it's only up. like a 40 second loop. That's cutting it too close. Yeah. Like, give it like a fucking 20 minute loop. No, but it, it keeps like regenerating. Yeah, I know. Like but restarting. like, man. It's too close. Yeah, it cuts it's a little but, too close. But that's the thing. It's like, as you were pointing out, it's like the, so, okay. You know, so the timer doesn't count down to zero right. and blow up, but she's still on the pressure point. There's and still the lasers. lasers right. still yeah. There. And we just cut to the outside of the fan and he's lifting her out. We yeah, don't see how out. any of that's solved. No, you, no. You, you, we have to assume that there was like an Indiana Jones situation. Yeah. Switched the, the statue for a rock. Like, yep. I, I don't know what else they did. I don't know. They got some random little girl and switched her out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> her in there. See, the real, the real <laughs> hero is dead. convict girl, because that's, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, their yeah, whole thing. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. convicts as, as, as guinea pigs. They right. get some little girl who murdered... Uh, 50 people on a Monday, <laughs> and now they put her on there. The real hero's death is he would have switched places with her and helped her that's up what I through, was and happen. then he would have killed himself by getting off. That's, that. yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's what I yeah. thought was going to happen. That's the hero's yeah. death, yeah. yeah. I'm well, sorry. This is a Denzel Washington movie. Yeah. He is not going to die at the end of this. He's got to get his power shot on I top think, of the building. But I think your end. explanation while we were watching the movie was probably actually the logic that the filmmakers... <laughs> what did were, I say? But he said it out loud. He was going to switch the wires that's all he, 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 he and he did he switched the wires he solved it oh yeah i was yelling at mccaleb i was like why don't you understand what's going on he said what he was doing it goes in the input and out of the output yeah, and it's fine that's it. it's over what is so hard to accept? it's just so dumb because they could have cut out the pressure plate line just cut that line just cut that line and then uh, we don't even know that that's a thing in this situation and so right. you can do the whole input output thing and i'm buying it because but it then he could have just lifted her up and took her out the, of there. The, I mean, all, it all was like need, you need one yeah. thing. You need a sound effect that goes. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I just fixed your whole. Spoken movie. like a true editor, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I heard wrong. it power down. That's all I needed. Yeah. <laughs> so the end shot of the movie with uh, Denzel up on top of the, the mm-hmm. building and he's got um, Sid's power cube or nano cube yes. or whatever. Yeah. And there's this like implication that maybe he's not you know, gonna like, throw it yeah because he gets it out and he's like gonna throw it off the roof and he's like no like what's he thinking about i it- don't know i don't know what that character was thinking yeah. at that point because nothing in his personality says that he would even consider right now like yeah. i'm gonna wait i shouldn't destroy this because, because uh you right. know for the greater yeah, science. good of some for science <laughs> there's, yeah, there's nothing, nothing to say that no. nothing he should be thinking about on top of this no room. he <laughs> should whip that uh, no just take he, it out and woof. you know what he was doing he's like <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> like that was his moment. Like he just fully realized it right there, and he's just like, "All right." I thought he was gonna drop it and like step on it or some shit. Yeah. Was it was it like a subconscious thing? Like, like once this is destroyed, like it's really done, and I have nothing. I else. have no Probably. purpose. Like I have no purpose. In yeah. Life. It's like how Batman. Like th- yeah. like the philosophical argument that like the reason why Batman doesn't kill the Joker is because he can't exist without the Joker, right? Exactly. You know. Yeah. So I feel like that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Like he has no. There's no revenge. There's no like avenging his family. He's Once out of prison. Done, it's it's done. He's out of prison. Yeah. Like he's got nothing his from here. His serial killer is that's gone. Good. Yeah. Thank you. I like that. Yeah. Thank like, you. That's a, a good reading. He yeah. was really destroying well, his purpose. Well, yeah. well, yeah. <laughs> in that moment, he was destroying his purpose in life. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. All right. Yeah. 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 I'm going with that. Yeah. Thank you. That's a good one. <laughs> and then the movie's over. And, and then, then we, yeah. Yeah. Wide but the sun's coming up, so we know it's a good ending. That's yes, very true. <laughs> Bam. And then mm-hmm. it's all. And then done. the weirdest musical shift I've ever heard yeah. in my entire life. Yeah, because it goes from that like Rob Zombie esque mm-hmm. uh, rock like to. 15 seconds of it. Yeah. Into. Some weird ballad. Peter Gabriel. Mm-hmm. Like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird, it's man. It's the Sledgehammer guy. Is it. Um, yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, I don't that, know that sentence that yeah. you just I was said. like, that is Sledge Peter Gabriel. Gabriel. Yeah, that's is Peter Gabriel. Peter Gabriel. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that's Peter Gabriel. Gabriel. Okay. I it might be wrong, but it sure sounded like him. Okay, so. Oh, uh, I thought it was I was Sting. like, Gallagher? Is he fucking Sledgehammer guy talking about Gallagher? <laughs> I, was like, I thought it sounded like Sting, but. Yeah. <sighs> who cares? I don't, I don't know who it was. <laughs> it's not I don't know who it was. It's not important. Know. All right, so we've solved Virtuosity 2.0. As much as we're going. Why is there not a sequel? Was there a direct video? Uh, Virtuosity 2.0. Uh, this movie cost 30 million. It made 37 million dollars. Ouch! <laughs> so no, Thanks. 
No sequels. Okay. No All sequel right. for you. It's unfortunate. Is it? Is it? We'll I don't know. <laughs> all right. We're going to tell you whether or not you should watch this movie. But first of all, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to participate in or well, first of all, we're going to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters. Masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. My chair doesn't squeak. Do you think he can be regenerated with glass? Have we tried that? It's. it's I not, think he just eats glass. It's not glass, glass yeah. it's mud. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm not yeah. sure it does anything. No, he regenerates, but it's not with glass. Okay. Do we say that at one point Sid has to eat glass in order to return? Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, but he doesn't have to. He doesn't to have to. I think just, he was just being drunk. Yeah. You're just supposed to be near yeah. it, kind of like the T2 yeah. right. or, yeah. or T-1000. That's yeah. funnier, though, if he's got to eat it instead of rubbing it on his yeah. bones. Yeah. Yeah. And Tracy Lords is in this movie. Tracy Lords yeah, for a movie. second. For a yeah. moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, we should let the good folks at home know how they can participate in this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Night Freak Show. Or Twitter at Sat Freak Show. They can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or they can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, okay, so first of all, we had a message here from Talk Spooky to Me. Mm, uh, all right. Who says, speaking. Now, this is an ongoing thing that we've had going on in the past couple of mail bags. <laughs> oh. oh, I love through lines. Speaking of Sean choosing pervy movies. Why did oh. I get nailed down for this? You guys should watch Reform School Girls and Vinegar Syndrome just put, came out with a Blu-ray. I've seen it. It's, is it a pervy it's, movie? Yeah. Why is Sean getting called out? I don't get it. I feel like Colin brings more pervy stuff than Sean does. Yeah. Is my stuff too sleazy? Is that what's going on? Or are we just not remembering? Because we do forget things. Maybe, <laughs> maybe like we maybe if forget. you look at the entire history of the freak show, Sean comes out on top. But yeah, this know. is one of those things where you never back thought that about far. it. But you look back, and every yeah. every movie I've brought has like boobs in it or but something. No, it's <laughs> it's cat, no you're well, the cat we murder person. We take we've, a look at the last ten years, and we're like, God, you're disgusting. <laughs> yeah. We've established like, Jesus, your Sean, your cat, cat murder, Nazi boobs. I'm like, no, this is Colin. I know what the hell. <laughs> Collins, Collins, like, I brought Nazi boobs and Frankenstein. I yeah. think I deserve this title. Yeah. Uh, Fair. Right. About uh, tonight's movie, Virtuosity, Michael Whitaker writes in and says, get ready for some choice overacting and some mid- mid-90s predictions of how the internet slash virtual reality will work. Plus, Denzel Washington as a cyborg for a total deus ex machina I think I use that term right. Purposes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you did. Uh, he says it's great. Uh, <laughs> Tony Bradshaw says, I want to hear your screams. And Denzel had one of the best practical effects fake beards ever. That was, that was fake. Beard? That was a good that beard. That makes me sad because like oh, I want grow a real beard, man. So you look good with a movie. beard. Yeah. That's good with a beard. Mm-hmm. Grant Paris says, I love this as a kid. Crow is hot and ate glass. It's classic. It feels very demolition, man. He did anyone else get that vibe? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and oh, yeah. I like we were talking about when we were watching the movie, like I forget that Russell Crow used to look like this. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> like I always think of like the older puffy, little more slovenly crow when a I mummy? think of him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, or even, uh, or what was that? What was that road rage movie he Unhinged. did? Oh, yeah. that, that's like that's how I think yeah. of him. It would now. be yeah. great in this movie he, if he had gone. Are you not entertained? Yeah, yeah. It would have <laughs> uh, DJ Dogman Fish. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Saying about yeah, yeah. virtuosity and says I watched this when it came out on video in late '95, early '96, and for several years I thought it was just a fever dream. <laughs> it I is can see that. that. I can it, see that. Yeah. Well, he says it is that, but it's also a movie that was actually made. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Talking to people it and being is. like, do you remember the movie where <laughs> yeah. Russell Crowe ate glass? Yes. Yeah. In a purple, and like, in a purple suit. No, yeah. I guarantee if, Sean, if you described this to me before tonight, I would have been like, that doesn't fucking exist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You'd be like, no. Yeah. yeah. You're wrong. Uh, last week, we watched a movie called Opera. Joey Blythe writes in and says, I played this on Tubi right before falling asleep. Not because of the movie. I was just sleepy and woke up at the last 10 minutes thinking, why am I watching The Sound of Music? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that is like, you will be completely lost waking up at that point in the yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. change. Yeah. Uh, Murphy's Momarin said uh, about William McNamara, the uh, bit player in Opera. Uh-huh. Uh, who on Facebook we said came to a painful ending. Yes. Uh, says, and painful dubbing. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, yes, there was yes, some yes, rough, yes. There rough dubbing. Cool. Rough dubs. Uh, Scraw793 says, I haven't seen this one in a while. How cool was the bullet through the peephole that takes out the phone? Exclamation, question, question, exclamation, exclamation. <laughs> it was to <laughs> the coolest. That, the best. That was a fucking symphony. That's right there. But yet yeah. it's still got upstaged by birds in the third act, in my I opinion. Mean, the, the, I, the fucking Spartan kick and release the ravens was just, so amazing. That page, like... Once flew it flew through. It flew through, but then it like turned over a couple times. Yeah. Until, with a guy with in a it. Guy in it. With a right. guy in it. Yeah. And the raven dude kicks it open yeah. with the fury of a man who has raised birds yeah. since he was five <laughs> and has finally found his purpose. When he's like, we're getting vengeance. Yes. We're getting, it was bird vengeance. It was, like, yes. <laughs> Well, Scross and then they all circle him, and then he flies yeah. away. Yeah, it, it should have ended like that. Uh, Scross seven ninety three also <laughs> says, "I forgot about the metal music during the kill scenes. Imagine running into Mister Argento at an Iron Maiden concert. That would, <laughs> that would scare the shit out of me because he is kind of a scary looking dude." Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the previous week we watched a movie called Hellraiser Hell World. <laughs> we sure did. And Maya Madsen writes in and says, Doug Bradley has said he'd be happy to reprise his pinhead role for the right money or the right script, but so far no one has offered either. Right. If Bradley does go back to playing the Hell Priest, I'll go back to watching Hellraiser movies. There you go. That said that it's not just like they're not paying me enough. It's they're not paying me enough and the scripts are bad. Gonna, Those are yeah. two ba- very valid reasons right. to not and make more. the only more. reasons he's never going to play it again. Yeah. Because they're not going to pay him and it's not going to be a good script. But right. he's still putting the makeup on. I think we said at conventions. Yeah. He'll show up mm-hmm. so you get a, a yep. photo. He'll do photo ops. So he will mm-hmm. do. Very you know, nice. The, yeah. Uh, B Movie Vault says, surely after 10 movies, it's time to do what Full Moon Features used to do and just combine all your franchises together. Have <laughs> Pinhead and Ghostface team up to fight the From Dusk Till Dawn vampires with cameos from Michael Myers and a zombified Kurt Russell from Death Proof. It'd sell <laughs> one ticket at least, two, if I told my wife it's a rom-com. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I think Full Moon, uh, they probably combined uh, Evil Ginger Bong, Dead, Evil Bong and Ghoulies. Ginger Deadman, I think, is a combo movie yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah. The shrunken heads, do they ever get into the, the action? I'm sure they're what they're weird toy movies. They got demonic toys demonic or something. Toys. Oh, or yeah. puppet do mm-hmm. they have Puppet Doll Master? Man. Doll Man? Yeah. I, I don't yeah. I've never actually seen any of these movies. I just know they exist out yeah. there. So I assume <laughs> oh. they're crossing over. Oh man. No. Oh just, no. <laughs> 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 what can you summon here at the Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, also, this is a conjuring circle. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Like stuff. Well, we did. We did do here. the original Puppet Master. We did. We, we uh, got to bring the. If you're, we're gonna do another one. We got to do what? Is it the third or the fourth one that Greg Sotero from the Room is in? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. the one we got to bring if we do another one. Yeah. That might be the eighth one. <laughs> eighth one. Okay. I'm not kidding. I, I didn't know there was that is, many puppet masters. I think this is one that goes to like the old country. Yeah, this, no, this is him like yeah. in yeah, France yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I think it's the like the eighth. One? And... That's why I said I thought it was the third or fourth. Yeah, third That's what I, I thought it was too. Yeah. Oh, okay. maybe I could be wrong. I'm gonna look it up because he talks about it a lot in uh, in the disaster in the disaster book. book yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. Probably wrong. Because he got cast because he could already speak French, and that was like that's why they cast him. Damn, I thought it was later. Okay, you're right. Um, also about Hellraiser, Nelson Nascimento says, I didn't even want to comment on this one due to how angry it makes me, <laughs> but I felt compelled to answer Sean. Hardcore Hellraiser fan, hardcore Clive Barker fan. Okay. There is nothing redeeming about this. Okay. Film. Good to right. know. Thank Fuck you. Fuck Dimension and Weinstein. <laughs> Listening to the Freak Show review it, however, was quite enjoyable. Okay. okay good. good. I'm glad you enjoyed good. the movie. <laughs> you didn't get enjoyment of the movie. I'm yeah. glad you got it out of us. Uh, Jason Madsack. A.K.A. MF Man, the keeper mm-hmm. of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, says, does anyone remember when Pinhead showed up on one of the MTV spring breaks back in the early 90s? I remember that! <laughs> I saw the clip going around Night Flight this week, so we're, really? we got finger on the pulse. I saw it, yeah. I a totally forgot about it. that until just now. Oh, wow. <gasps> I kept seeing, because Gilbert Gottfried died, yep, there was that the clip Up too. All Night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, well, anyway, he says, uh, <laughs> I remember him ominously... I mean, ominously wandering the beach. They might have done some <laughs> sort of game with him. I don't remember. Singled out with Cenobites would have been kind of awesome. Uh, yeah, it would. Right. Oh, my God. But I forgot about the, that. That's a lot of sun for... For how for, pale he is. Yeah, for, for, and he doesn't <laughs> yeah, look dead great in the, in the in bright lights. Uh. Yeah. Um, so or hotel room corners, as we noticed in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh. Well, we were talking about that particular hotel room was probably <laughs> in Romania. We were saying on the uh, episode where it was filmed, and Travis Legler says, if memory serves, I think Seed of Chucky was filmed there, too, and on the cheap Children of the Corn. How many good movies did they have? The first one was okay. 
Ooh. Uh, that is a big it. blind spot for me. Yeah. Children of the Corn? I don't know like, much about them. I haven't seen a lot of yeah. something. Have we brought any of them? No. Uh-oh. You conjured it now, Collins. Conjuring Circle. Of the Corn. What did we watch? What am I, mean, I remembering? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't know. That's a vague question. Yeah. What did we watch? <laughs> what, what am I remembering? I thought we watched There's it. a series of those. Yeah, there, I mean, there's, Wasn't there's like a number. And a TV remake. Mo- a TV a, show or something? There's a two-part TV movie. Okay. And I think they shot one... In New Zealand during the COVID pandemic, because the laws Christ, were different of there, and they yeah. could still. So there is another Children of the Corn. I think it came out, and it was like it's out there. I'm somewhere. thinking of fucking Stephen King, uh, Christie Alley, Village of the Dam. Thank you. That's what I'm thinking of. That's what I'm thinking of. Uh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I say because Stephen King is Children of the Corn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, and finally, mm-hmm. Stephen Helicopter always hovering. Yeah, so <laughs> always hovering. it's hell to have to watch any Hellraiser movie. Oh damn! Yeah, 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 it's kind of harsh. Of them. No, come mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. 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 I kind of agree. Mm-hmm. I kind of agree. Oh, those first two, at least first one, classic. All right, mm-hmm. so now we're thank you all again yes. for writing, and we thank you for writing. We it. really appreciate it. Um, and now we're going to go around the table, and we're going to tell you what we thought. Tonight. <gasps> You're going to go first tonight. <laughs> What did you think of Virtuosity? Um, so this was a first time watch for me. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I knew nothing about this movie. And just like gearing up to watch it tonight, Sean was giving us little like tidbits like Denzel, Russell Crowe. I was like, what? What are we watching? What is this? <laughs> um, so Denzel gives you exactly what you would expect from Denzel in this movie. Whether um, you like it or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's exactly what you think. However, the movie is not exactly what you think a Denzel Washington movie will be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this movie is kind of bonkers in the only way a 90s tech-centered movie can be. Um, and I don't think... I would have been as engaged had it not been for the unbelievably entertaining um, performance from Russell Crowe. He he gave it his all, man. Th- this was this was fun to watch. We uh, like I said earlier, when we say it's Batman Joker, like he is delivering as m- this is his Joker performance. Yes. Like hands down, you don't need. I mean, I know he was in was he in Justice League? He was Superman's dad. Oh, yeah, whatever. yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, he was. He was Superman's dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Both of Superman's dads have been Robin Hood. Oh, yeah. Yes, they have. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, they have. Well, Don't know. Go. That's not useful information for anybody, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, what Sometimes it needs yeah. to get out there. Yeah. Was I was gonna say Brando I was gonna say Marlon Brando yeah. was never. No, was no, no, no. No, in the in the Snyderverse. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um yeah, this, I mean, if you ever want to see Russell Crowe as a superhero villain, like, this is it. This is this is the movie to watch. It's batshit crazy. Um, but it is one of the funnest performances that we've seen in a while, I think. Um, I'm going to say watch it just for him. Because, honestly, the rest of the movie, like, there's so many ridiculous plot holes and weird tie-in. Not even tie-ins, because they don't make sense. They're not tied into anything. They just happen. There's lots of weird things that happen in this movie. Um, that just don't need to be there. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna say rec- I'm gonna say I recommend it just for Russell Crowe. I think you should see this Russell Crowe performance. Um, there's some decent uh, practical effects, um, prosthetics in this, but it's really nothing super memorable. I'm gonna forget about it in a week, but I'm not gonna forget about Russell Crowe's performance. So I'm gonna say watch it just for him. Colin, what do you think? Well, it was also a first time watch. I mean, this yeah. is my first time seeing Virtuosity because yes, I saw that poster Sean back in the day, and, and I like, rightly no. knew to skip the movie. Uh, um, yeah, I, 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 I'm sitting here. I'm probably going to repeat myself, but uh, the movie. I mean, we've talked about it. It's a bad movie. Uh, there's so much of it is bad um, that otherwise you would probably you would pass over it like right off the bat. But it does have these performances i mean because you have these actors and again i'm sitting there trying to grade denzel washington's performance in this because he's very um low-key yeah but committed i mean he's he he's working i think as an actor in this part he's taking it very seriously and maybe to the movie's detriment um you know but i mean it's a good performance i think by him it's just the part itself does him no favors you know it's like this is a boring character. Yeah, there's no flash. No, it's like mm-hmm. you're playing just the humdrum, you know, but that's the script, I guess. He's doing what he can, but he's not like 
adding verve to it. He's just delivering like a, a solid version of this type of character. Right. And mm-hmm. so then it comes down to what Holly said. It's like basically the thing that this movie has is the Russell Crowe performance. And okay, it's a guy, you know, playing without any kind of limits and playing a loopy character. And I'm like, oh, I've seen that before. Have I seen it done better? Yes. You know, and it's just all the goofy CGI thing, I, I think, like, uh, hurts, you know, when you watch it. <laughs> and, it like, uh, and that kind of safe 90s movie uh, thing that they have going on where it's like, this is the most perfunctory, uh, you know, scenes and scripting and characters and all that. And it's just like, I don't think I, I will grant you that, like, his performance is, you know, unhinged. But I don't think mm-hmm. it's enough to actually, like, say, go watch the movie, unfortunately. So I'm going to say you can pass on it. Michaela, what do you think? Did you did you mean to I was like, use the, the pun unhinged? Was unhinged. unhinged pun? Yeah. I, I still haven't seen that movie. Yeah. I, gotta, I, I don't think anyone it. has seen it. No, no, I haven't okay. seen it either. <laughs> um, it, you know, I love this subgenre of 90s future tech crime stopper sure. like yeah. it's yeah. uh it's a, it's well, a very <laughs> yeah it's a very specific weird subgenre that only was like a blip in cinema history but i love it mm-hmm. and because i like they just get so creative with it and i fe- i feel like i say this every week but we don't get movies like this anymore <laughs> but i feel like i've uh, no why now like because if this trailer for this movie came out on the internet right now twitter would drag this shit immediately and be like this looks so stupid this yeah. looks so fucking yeah. dumb like can you imagine the reaction to like this like yeah and it would be like people... it was the reaction they had at the time <laughs> right yeah. Yeah. but like million I think so. but the movie came out though would, this yeah, just though. the trailer alone though mm-hmm. if that came out people would be piling on it for weeks True. morbius is still being piled on <laughs> and it's been how many weeks of that That's movie being the out equivalent of this movie right? yeah yeah, but like, budget, budget level but level. I think studios won't even make a movie like this now because they know dropping that trailer will get that reaction. So they play it safe and they play it like much more leveled and not as bonkers and crazy, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, like, I mean, even go back and listen to our episode on Serenity from like a couple of years back. Like that trailer didn't tell you anything about how insane that movie actually was, probably because they were afraid of the reaction it was going to receive, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I like movies that take swings, even if they don't always hit... I appreciate that they have creative freedom, that they're trying something, that they're being weird and being creative with it because what's the point of making movies if you're just going to be so serious and uptight about everything all the time? Mm-hmm. Um, which is weird to say about a movie that Denzel's in because I feel like he's always serious and uptight. Mm-hmm. But um, it's cool to see him be at least do that in a different setting, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. It's just like yeah. you see the character stay the same and just the <laughs> you background. Put, yeah, you just change the background behind, behind him. Like, oh, yeah, it it's like that scene in Wayne's World where they're testing out the green screen and they're like, hello, I'm in... Right, yeah. like that's Denzel like they just put a different yeah. green screen behind him in this movie but he's like what's this movie okay right but like I said I was scrolling his IMDb because I was thinking like when we were watching the movie like what what do I know him best for what do I like him the most for I'm like this I was falling asleep scrolling his thing because I'm like this yeah. is all the driest of dry 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 stuff mm-hmm. like how many times can you watch this guy be a lawyer or a cop you know like or an equalizer yeah <laughs> like or just like I, like I said, I think Man on Fire sticks out the most for me for him just because like he did do some violent shit in that movie, but he was also like a personal bodyguard. It's always the same template, and I think a former cop in that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right, from yeah. Grace. Yeah. How yeah. uh, many little blonde girls does he save? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> How like, I, like, how do we not have jobs writing scripts? You know, how we could we could write a Denzel script in like fifteen minutes. <laughs> oh, like, sure. yeah. You know. Um, so yeah, I think you gotta watch it just cause it, it is a spectacle and it is a time capsule and it is a good double feature with Demolition Man. Oh, for sure. So just like, you know, watch Under the Influence. I think being really, really stoned would really help this movie. So, <laughs> um, I'm going to recommend it, Sean. Well, actually, hold on. I'm curious mm-hmm. who played it better, uh, Russell Crowe or Wesley Snipes? Ah, they were both uh, so good. Gonna, Cause they're both so crazy. They I'm going to give it to Wesley Snipes. I think I have to take it from because he was kind of racist in that movie. So I think I'm going to, yeah. Oh, okay. He had that one moment when the Asian people walked by that was very unfortunate Uh, in that movie. But, but they're both great. Yeah. I love them both. Mm -hmm. So, Sean. Uh, In the double feature, which would you program first? Virtuosity or Demolition Man? Virtuosity. 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 There is a right answer to this. Yeah. Yeah. Virtuosity (laughs) first. 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 And strong with Demolition Man. Yeah. 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 Just to get your feet dipped in and all Mm -hmm. that. Yep. Uh, virtuosity. Wow. Uh, uh, what a nice revisit. I haven't watched this movie in, uh, 
probably a good 10 years, I would say. But I watched it. I mean, this made the rounds on HBO all the time. So this was a constant view for me. Um, it is, this movie has every problem we described to you on this show. Uh, everything we said, everything Colin said, um, there is a, what? I'm sorry. Uh, I get get singled out. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Well, no, because you, well, no, no, uh, because you specifically said that, um, I mean, I agree this, there are, um, problems with this movie. There is redundancy in this movie that doesn't need to be there. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, there's story problems there is, but there is, Russell Crowe, I think, is doing a very good performance. Um, this one's a hard one to recommend. It, man, if it was 15 minutes shorter, I could really give it a go watch it. I still think you sh- probably should watch it because of just, if, if nothing else, the time it came out. Because of all the elements, you know, early uh, Russell Crowe and Denzel Washington, early CGI effects. Whether Unless they make you feel bad, like Colin said, which is a thing. <laughs> Because these movies can make you feel that. I feel all the time when we watch the direct video stuff and all that stuff. So I get that. Um, yeah, I still think I'm going to recommend it just because of the place it holds for me um, and having watched it so much. Um, yeah, I'll give it a recommend. It is a tad, I mean, it's a little long and uh, Denzel Washington is a little bland, but you got Russell Crowe in there. He's doing good. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think I'm going to recommend it. Um, it's a close one, but yeah, uh, watch Virtuosity. All right. That's Virtuosity mm-hmm. on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And uh, that means that next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Holly. 